Okay, the next topic is non-specific resistance. They are not necessarily specific for one particular type of pathogen. It's divided in first line of defense, such as the skin and the mucus barriers. They stop the microorganisms from crossing them because of substance that we have, such as, for example, keratin on top of our skin, or in the mucous membranes, we have, for example, lysosome that is going to destroy bacteria. The second line of defense, this one is also non-specific. This is going to consist of cells such as leukocytes and macrophages, as well as some proteins found in the blood, and natural killer cells, inflammation, as well as fever. The third line of defense is going to be the one that is going to be a specific. It's called a specific because it's a specific for certain type of microorganisms. For example, the antibodies that help you against chickenpox, they are not going to defend you against the flu. So if we keep scrolling down, we're going to see some details. So for example, we have in here external barriers. External barriers are going to be basically the skin as well as the mucous membranes that we have in our body. In the skin, we have the keratinocytes. The keratin is a hard protein that will protect our skin and it's going to make very hard for the microorganisms to cross it. Not only that, but uh, we're constantly shedding these cells. So this, it doesn't allow a lot of time for the microorganisms to develop and multiply and penetrate trait our skin. Mucous membranes, obviously, they're going to produce mucus, which is going to trap the microorganisms in there, not allowing them to cross and invade our body. Also, we have this enzyme called lysozyme that destroys microorganisms, so present in tears and saliva. Underneath the epithelial and uh, the mucous membrane, we're going to have in there the glycosaminoglycans, which is going to be part of the ground substance. A very important glycosaminoglycan is hyaluronic acid, which is going to give a viscous consistency to the connective tissue, not allowing these microorganisms again to cross it. The next one that is also non-specific is the leukocytes as well as microphages, in other words, cells. The leukocytes, which are going to be the white blood cells. Neutrophils, the uh, main cells that are going to be in charge of destroying microorganisms based on phagocytosis. But another one even more important than that is that neutrophils are going to use chemicals, superoxide, hydrogen peroxide, as well as hypochlorite. These are very important chemicals that they are going to cause destruction of most of the microorganisms that are going to be available in that specific area. Unfortunately, neutrophils are going to be destroyed as well. Next ones that we have are going to be eosinophils. Eosinophils are specific for parasites as well as allergens. Eosinophils, for example, are important in asthma. They are going to also produce superoxide as well as hydrogen peroxide in order to destroy the parasites. Okay, right here we have basophils. Basophils are going to be cells that you find in the blood. Similar to these are going to be the mast cells. The only difference is the mast cells are located in the tissues. Basophils and mast cells have the same functions, which is the secretion of chemicals with the purposes of allowing more cells to go into the areas of infection. Some of the chemicals that they are going to produce the histamine. Histamine is a very potent vasodilator that will increase blood flow into the areas of infection so more white blood cells can go in there. Also heparin that is going to avoid blood clotting. Since you don't form blood clots then there's no stoppage of the white blood cells reaching the area of, of infection. The next one that we have is going to be lymphocytes. There's a very important type of cell, which is the natural killer. Natural killers are the ones that are going to be very important in the non-specific area of the immune system. Lymphocytes T and lymphocytes B are also part of the immune system, but they are going to be very specific. Natural killers are in charge of destroying cells that might be infected with viruses, cancer cells, transplant cells, and other microorganisms. The next type of cell that we have right here is monocytes. Monocytes are the ones that you're going to find in the blood, but when they come out of the blood, they're going to turn into microphages. They go to the area of infection, and in the area of infection, they are going to destroy and phagocytize many things with the purposes of cleaning, if we can put it like that. They are going to phagocytize dead neutrophils, debris that may be in the area of infection, basically with the purposes of cleaning and removing and leaving the area prepare basically for repair. So if we keep scrolling down. Proteins are going to be interference. Interference are proteins produced by the cells when they are in, especially infected with viruses. They produce this interference and this interference are displayed in the cell membrane. And this basically has two purposes. One of them is to flag the cell as being infected so it can be destroyed by natural killer, for example. And another one is to inform the other cells that there is a viral infection. The next set of proteins, they are going to be part of the complement system. 
It's called complement system because they complete the function of the antibodies. Complement system is a set of proteins that they are going to work with the purposes of destroying microorganisms. The way they are activated, there are three main ways. One of them is a classical pathway, the other one is alternative pathway, and the other one is the lectin pathway. Classical pathway requires an antibody. Alternative pathway, the protein C3 is going to be broken into other proteins, and that's going to initiate the whole process. In the classical pathway, once the antibody attaches to the antigen, that initiates the whole process. And then the next one is lectin. Lectin is a protein that is going to attach to carbohydrates that the microorganisms have in the cell membrane. And once they attach to the carbohydrates that they have in the cell membrane, then it's going to initiate the pathway. This mechanism with these three different ways to activate it basically are going to have the same result. The C protein is going to be transformed into C3A and C3B by these three ways. And the result of that is going to be inflammation, immune clearance, phagocytosis, and cytolysis. Inflammation produces red, heat, pain, and swelling. Immune clearance is when the antibodies and the antigens get together. They are going to go with the red blood cells into the spleen and the liver, and the macrophages in the spleen and the liver are going to destroy this antigen-antibody complex. The next one is going to be the C3 is going to attach to the bacteria and this is going to uh, flag this bacteria in order to be destroyed. This flagging by the C3 is called opsonization and that's going to obviously initiate phagocytosis. The next one is the lectin attaches to the carbohydrates that's going to initiate the C3B is going to activate C5, C5 activates C6, C7, C8, and C9, and that's going to create a hole in the bacteria, and this hole in the bacteria will initiate the destruction of the cell by cytolysis. If we keep scrolling down, we can see in there the complement activation. I explain how this is going to happen. Next ones are going to be natural killer cells, which I already mentioned as well. Okay, so then we get a scrolling down, and then we're going to go to the other topic.